Okay, so when naming compounds, uh, I can do it two ways. I can either give you the name and ask for the formula, or I can give you the formula and ask for the name. So we're gonna start out with giving the formula and asking you to name that formula. So step number one to do that is to name the metal. So our example here of LICL, remember the metal is always written first. So in this example, LI is the metal. So we're gonna look on the periodic table, look up what LI is, and the answer to that is lithium. So our metal's name is lithium. Step number two is to take the root of the non-metal and add IDE to the end. The non-metal is always written second, so in this example, CL is our non-metal. We're gonna look that up and that's chlorine, and the root word for chlorine is chlor. So we're gonna add IDE to the end of that, and the answer is chloride. So when we look our, at our example of LICL, the answer to the formula, or the name to that formula, is lithium chloride. Name the following examples uh, here. Remember the subscripts do not change the rules for naming, so if you want to pause it now, that's fine. The first one we have is magnesium chloride, the second one is aluminum oxide, and the third one is calcium nitride. So now that we've gone from a formula to a name, let's move on to being given the name and asking for the formula. So again, in this example, we're gonna use beryllium chloride. So step number one is to write the element symbol for each element. So we're gonna look on the periodic table and look at what the element symbols are for beryllium and chlorine, and it's Be and Cl. Step number two is to identify and write the charges for those elements when they become ions. So again, being able to identify charges is super important. So for beryllium, it's a plus two charge, and for chlorine, it's a minus one charge. So you're gonna write those charges up there at the top right. Step number three is to cross the charges to create subscripts and remove the positive and negative signs because we don't need those. So the negative one from chlorine is going to be the subscript for beryllium and the positive two for beryllium is going to become the subscript for chlorine. So we're going to remove the uh, positive and negative signs and slide those down. We never write a number one as a subscript, okay? The number one is always just understood. So we're going to remove the number one slide the beryllium over next to the chlorine, and here's your answer. So beryllium chlorine, or sorry, beryllium chloride is BeCl2. Sodium nitride, so we're gonna take sodium Na, and nitrogen is N. Sodium is gonna be a plus one. Nitrogen is gonna be a minus three. We're gonna remove the signs and slide those charges down. Remember, we don't need the one, so we're gonna get rid of that slide the nitrogen close, and it's Na3N. Potassium chloride, potassium is a K, chlorine is Cl. Potassium is going to be a plus one charge, chlorine is going to be a minus one charge. Again, take those uh, signs out and slide the ones down. And again, we don't need one, so we're gonna get rid of both of them, and your answer is KCl. For the third example, magnesium oxide, you have Mg and you have O. Magnesium is going to be a plus two charge, and oxygen is going to be a minus two charge. So when you cross those two and bring them down, you're gonna get Mg2O2. We're gonna take both of those twos out, and your answer is going to be MgO. And the reason we do that is because you always have to uh, simplify when possible. Okay, so you're gonna simplify the subscripts when possible. So instead of it being Mg2O2, it's going to be MgO. Created using Powtoon.